write an equation or expression to represent the statement. Here it says half of a number, so we have half of x decreased by 4, which means you're going to subtract 4, and then the word is represents equals 8. So half of a number decreased by 4 is 8. Solve x plus 2x equals 9. This would be 3x on the left. Then we would divide both sides by 3, giving us x equals 3. That same problem was posed nearly 4,000 years ago, and it appeared in an Egyptian mathematical papyrus that is now housed in the Museum of Moscow in Russia. However, the problem looked a little different from the problem we just solved. Listen as I read the problem aloud. The method of calculating a quantity calculated times 2 together with the quantity. So you have the quantity and the quantity times 2. It has come to 9. Which is the quantity that we asked for? So we're asking, what is x? What is the same about the problem we just read and problem 1? Well, they both say the same thing. They just say it in a different way. So one is using text and another is using symbolic language. One is an equation using symbols. And the other is using text. Why do you think the Egyptian version is written in words? It could be like a word problem we see today. Perhaps it was a riddle. Rather than writing it in symbols, they wanted it to be more like a riddle. This problem says, the papyrus also shows the solution pathway to this problem. The translation of it is shown here. So this is how they would solve it. You shall calculate the sum of this quantity and this 2. So remember we had x plus 2x, and it says that shall result in 3 or 3 shall result. You shall divide 9 by this 3. 3 times shall result. Look, 3 is what we asked for. What has been found by you is correct. What are the similarities and differences between this solution pathway and your solution pathway? This first line describes combining like terms, which is similar to what we did. The rest describes using some if-then moves to solve it, and we use those as well.
Our focus question as we watch this video is going to be how many dominoes made up the tower before it fell? So as we watch the video, we're looking for some key details that would help us solve this focus question. How many dominoes made up the tower before it fell? Some information that might be helpful as we try to determine how many dominoes are in this tower is to know the height of the tower or to know the size of the dominoes. We can look here and see that there's approximately going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 dominoes in this layer. And if we look going this way, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen in that layer as well. So in the base of it, we have 18 in each layer. Now, to determine the number of layers, that might take a little bit of work. We can pause the video in another section to examine another part. You can see here there are many layers, and then at some point it switches to be a more narrow tower. <laughs> And at the very top, it looks like those layers have approximately two dominoes per layer. This midsection, it looks like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Like there's going to be four going across. You can kind of see here. One, two, three, four, and then another section here would have one, two, three, four going across. So we have a part of it has 18 in each layer, part of it has about eight in each layer, and then the very top has approximately two in each layer. We have some information about the height of the tower, and it says it is 19 feet. We know we have layers that had 18, we had layers that had 8, and we had layers that had 2. It also gives us the width of the domino is 24 millimeters. So if we want to calculate how many domino layers there are, we would need to convert them to the same type of unit. So you can use your computer as a resource to help you through this. With a quick search, we can convert those feet to millimeters. So we have 5,791 approximately millimeters tall. If we divide, that would tell us how many layers there are. So 507 or 5,791 divided by 24 is approximately 241 layers. Now we have to decide how many of those layers had 18, how many of them had 8, and how many had 2. 
So we can go back and we can look and see an approximation of whether it was about half or two thirds of the tower. But again, we're just trying to approximate how many dominoes. We're not going to get the exact number because we already have to have rounding in this problem. Let's approximate that half of them for the 18 domino layers. So if we split 241 into two parts, it's going to be a decimal. So we're just going to approximate again to get an estimation of the layers. So we'll say about 121 layers have 18. Let's say a fourth of them had eight. We'll go with about 61. It's 60.25, but we'll approximate it to be 61. And then the twos, let's see if I had 241. I've already used up 121 and 61. That leaves me with 59 layers. <clears throat> so if we multiply all that out, it should tell us how many dominoes we have. 18 times 121. Eight times 61. And two times 59. If we add all those together, 2,178 plus 488 plus 118 is around 2,784 dominoes in the tower. Now I can watch the part two of the video to see how well we approximated. We said there were about 241 layers and 2,784 dominoes. Our layers were correct, but we under approximated for our dominoes. Make sure that you have your work for this lesson filled in your workbook and your composition book warm up finished.